Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 616. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 615 to 622. Hey, in 16, 666, 616, we have a great video about the large function and the small function. Now we're going to do uh, eight examples. We're going to do the basics, one, two, three, four, five, six examples, and then we're going to do some nasty array formulas. Actually, not nasty. We'll replace that word nasty with beautiful. They are hard, though. So um, the basics, the first six example, uh, if you want to see that, then you just turn it off when we get to the array. If you want to see just the array, then, uh, of course, fast forward. All right, large and small. We have a list of names and sales. And all we want to see here is a list of the three largest. So usually you use the max to get the biggest. But how do you get the second largest and the third largest? No problem. Large equals large. An array and a K. The array is just the uh, values that you want to, to look through. So I'm going to highlight there and then hit the F4 key to lock it. Comma and the K is simply which one? One is max, two is second biggest. Now in this example right here we put number one to two, three in cell so we just refer to it. Close parentheses, control enter and then double click and send it down. Now notice the large and the small will extract duplicates and sometimes that's to your advantage. Um, like here, we can clearly see that there's 181 and 181. It doesn't differentiate between this, like if you were trying to rank these. This, this is not r ranking them in, in that regard. Uh, other times, it's trouble. And down in the array, we'll see how to deal with it. Now, sometimes you don't want to see an, uh, an extra column with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or whatever it is. So no problem. We can do large. Actually, the here, this is 1, but when we went down, um, we saw 2. So no problem. There's a way to get 1, 2, 3, et cetera, as you copy a formula down through the cells. Instead of referring to a cell, it's this, equals rows. Now rows, you have to tell it, give it a range like this many. And right now, it would say there's 3. F, um, sorry, 2 to 4, there's 3 rows. But no problem. We're sitting in G2, so I'm going to type. Uh, G dollar sign two colon G two. Now, how many rows are there between two and two? One. But since that's locked and that's not, that's a relative cell reference. Control Enter, con uh, copy it down. As we copy it down, we can see here two to four. How many are there? This is a relative reference, so it's four. There are exactly three rows. That's a number incrementer. So then we just use this little uh, bit. The array, you got to hit F4, comma, and then that's the little bit for the K, and uh, a number incrementer for inside formulas. Now, the small is the same thing, but instead of the largest, it'll give you the smallest one first. So I'm going to F4, comma, relative cell reference. Uh, large, you know, you could think of examples. Um, you want to see the largest sales, or the number of units, or the uh, the uh, longest time. However, the small, some examples would be, you know, if you're measuring how fast someone's doing a particular operation in a manufacturing firm, you know, you might be interested in the smallest time. What's the smallest, or what's the 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 least amount of sales? So there it is again. Small will uh, show the duplicates. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to come over here. And why don't we do it this way this time? I'm going to actually move this this way. And instead of displaying them over here in a in rows, we want to do that same trick. I'm just going to copy over here. We need a formula. We need a, a number incrementer inside of a formula. So instead of rows, we'll use columns, right? And so we're sitting in G7. So I type a dollar sign in front of the G instead of the number because I want this locked as I go across the columns. Colon G7. Control Enter. And now as I copy them to the side. Boop, there it shows me just the same ones here, but um, in different columns. And if we double click here, you can see, sure enough, the G is locked, the I is not. From G to I, how many columns there are? Three. 
All right, now another great use for the large and small is to add. Now let's just do the large part here, equals large. Let's highlight this. Now normally we put a K, we put a 1 or we put a 2 or whatever it is. But since we want all three, no problem. This function will handle an ar array syntax. An array syntax, because we need the number 1, 2, and 3 here, because we want to get all of them, and then we'll add them. But to get all of them, you got to know array syntax. Curly bracket, 1, and I'm going to use a comma. Comma in array syntax means column, but it doesn't matter. You can use col comma or semicolon, 2, comma, 3, and uh, curly bracket, close parentheses. Now, I can highlight this and use my F9 key to evaluate. And you can see, sure enough, it goes through this range and extracts the three biggest. I'm going to control Z because I don't want to hard code that. Now, you need to do something because the three numbers won't show up in the cell and add unless you use um, something like we want to use sum here because the interesting thing about large and this array syntax is it is not considered an array. Uh, it will just uh, work inside of the sum. The sum function will, in essence, see those three values and add them. So I can just hit Enter, and that's the total. Equals sum, and then we'll do small. You want to see uh, the total uh, smallest three times, or in this case, the three smallest uh, sales. So I'm going to do small, get my comma, and then curly bracket. That is, con curly brackets contain the arrays. 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, close curly bracket, close parentheses on the small. And notice the screen tips are always handy. It reminds you you need to put a close parentheses here and then enter. All right, so uh, large and small, very useful in many situations. Now we'll go on to the uh, uh, some examples in array formulas. They're often used in, almost always used in formulas that involve returning multiple values to, ro to, um, to rows or columns. Now up here we noticed that it was 191, and there were duplicates. So here we want to see a formula, and this is a pretty hard formula. Um, that will return a list of unique items. Now, in this case, there's lots of variations on this type of formula. Um, we're going to do a, a, a one that is less complicated because we don't have any blanks uh, and we don't have any wildcards and things like that. So we're simply going to note that our data set is set up that way and build this formula. Now, the first thing is we need to, in essence, look up the uh, one, two, three, the five largest values here. Um, now notice this list is sorted, and that is important here. So you sort this, and then you want to return the five largest values, but skip over any duplicates. So we're going to use the lookup function index. So index. Now the array part is all of the numbers, right? And then we'll just have to tell it what row number. So I'm going to highlight this and hit the F4 key comma, now the row number. Now if we could do this manually, we'd say row number 1, row number 2, row number 4, row number 6, and 7. But we want our formula to do this. And obviously if you had an example like this, a small one, you could copy and paste, or you could use filter and copy and paste, or you could use advanced filter. Ah, but if you want a little template like this, where you just dump data here and it always um, just automatically works. That's where a formula like this comes in. All right, so what are we going to do here? We're going to have to use the small function. Now, why the small instead of the large? Well, first off, they're sorted. So, um, and, and our formula is going to look for only unique elements. That's unique. That's unique. That's not. That's a dupe. That's unique. That's not unique. That's a dupe. That's unique. Okay. But why are we using small? Because we want the row number ultimately. Remember, right here, index, we're looking for a row number. So we need 1, 2, 4, right? So we need the smallest row number first, all right? So you ready? The array, we somehow have to, um, from this, uh, create a, a series of trues and falses that will give us the row number. So I'm going to go if, 
and the logical test. And now we're going to use the frequency function here to the frequency function with numbers is a great way to get a true false for all the unique numbers in this list. So we're going to use frequency. By the way, in about uh, a week or two, I have an amazing uh, video coming out on the frequency function, you know, like 10, 8 to 10 uses of the frequency function. We'll talk in great detail about all the intricacies of this. But here, we're just going to see how to use it to get a unique list of numbers. The data array, in essence, you usually you have a huge data set, right? And you say bins like, I want 10, 20, 30. So then it would gr count all the ones from uh, below 10, between 10 and 20, and between 20 and 30. But our data, we're just going to highlight this. Bloop, that's our data, comma, and the bins. Here's the trick for getting unique. You just highlight the same numbers. Because the frequency is programmed when it is counting in bins is if there is a duplicate bin, it just doesn't use it. Let's go ahead and close parentheses and see what this does here. I'm going to hit the F9 key. Sure enough, there's one of that. There's two 181s. And notice for the, the, the duplicate, it just puts a 0. That is just simply ignored. Right, so now we have numbers, right? Well, numbers inside of the if function, when you have a logical test, any non-zero number, the if function interprets as true. And that's true for any number, negatives, positives, whatever. So the if function sees this as true, true, false, true, false, false. So totally awesome. Control Z. Now, that's the logical test, comma, and what do we want if true? Remember. The index needs a row number. Remember the small if frequency construction sitting right there. So I'm going to go row of the this right here. I'm going to hit the uh, F4 key. I've probably been haven't hitting the F4 key, so I have to come back here in F4, 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 F4. All right, but now, right now, that won't work because this says row 2. And notice, this isn't rows like we did up here. This is row. So if you highlight this, it doesn't count how many rows. It gives you each row in an array if I hit F9. That's not going to work. We need 1, 2, 3, et cetera. Control Z. So no problem. I'm going to subtract row of uh, this B2 right here. Now, that's the first item in this list, right? You can see that little green one right there. So 2 minus 2 is 0, but that's not going to work, so we add one back in. And by the way, I've done other videos. This is very robust in terms of if anyone inserts rows or anything anywhere in the spreadsheet, it'll always deliver the correct number of row, uh, the correct number of rows in this array. So no problem. That's exactly what we want, only when we see from the if and frequency logical test, a true will it give us the row number. And we can even highlight this and hit the uh, F9 key. There they are. Control Z. Close parentheses on the if. We don't need the false. And now, what does it need? It needs a, a k, comma. In this case, I'm not going to use my formula incrementer because I have it right here. So I just go boop. Now, what is that doing? That is, as we go down, it will uh, ex the small function will extract because if I highlight all of this and hit F9, you can see it has the exact row numbers. So as we're copying the small down, this needs 1, 2, 3. So it'll extract 1 first, and as it goes to the next row, 2, and then 4, etc. Control-Z. Close parentheses on the small. The screen tips are very helpful. We've just delivered our row number. We don't need column. Close parentheses. And we don't need an if. And a lot of these formulas you've seen me do, we have an if. But we just have five, and there's always more than five values. We do not need that if. This is an array, so you have to hold Control Shift and Enter. Double click and send it down. That's a unique list of numbers. It does depend that this is sorted. Now. Um, the rest of this does not have a very good alternative. There are alternatives for a unique list of the biggest numbers, right? Filter, advanced filter. But now we want to return the names. So for example, notice we have some duplicates here. So for 181, I need, I'm need. i ultimately going to need both of the names of the sales reps listed side by side horizontally. So I need Sue and Christina. So first, we have to count how many of each one of these numbers. 
there are. I'm going to use count if. The range is going to be this. This is um, a small data set. You could see how useful the time spent in creating these formulas would be if you had a huge data set and you were dumping data all the time. There's our criteria. It'll just count the numbers. Double click and send it down. Now we're going to have to do uh, a big array formula here to extract some names. And we are going to have to do an if because as we copy over this direction, for example, here we only need one here, but here we need to show a blank, a blank, etc. But this row, I mean, th this is a row, but across the columns needs to be dynamic. So next time we dump in and the max has three duplicates, we need it to show all the names. So ready? Equals if. And I'm going to say uh, our columns, because we need we need a number incrementer as we go this way. So I'm sitting in G15. So dollar sign G15 colon G15 close parentheses. Whenever that is greater than this one, I'm going to hit the F4 to lock the column, because this way it needs to be looking at the 1. But when it goes down, it needs to be looking there. Whenever that this columns is greater than that, please show blank in the cell. So the value of true is double quote, comma, otherwise. And now we need an index. The array, well, where are the values we want to return? They are right there. I'm going to hit F4 to lock it in all directions. Same as before, we have our array, comma, and then we we need our a row number because our, our data set right here is in rows. So I'm going to do this, that same thing we did before. Oh, small, if. But here, we don't have to do a unique true false. We just need to say, is anything in this range right here? And I'm going to hit the F4 key. Is anything in that range right there equal to, boom, that number right there. Remember, we're, we're in this row right here. So whoosh, that one. And that needs to be locked column. So it goes this way, it sees 91. But it, when it moves down, it sees 181. That's the logical test, comma, and the value of true. We need our uh, row construction. Row. And I'm just going to use this. You can use either column here. And it's got to be locked, close parentheses, minus the row. And I'm going to say, uh, how about B2, copy. Notice I just double click that, plus 1. That's the value of true. We don't need the false, close parentheses. The k, I'm just going to copy this little piece right here. That is the uh, number incrementer as we go across columns. Close parentheses on this. Close parentheses on uh, the index, because we already have our row number. The if, we just put in our value of false, close parentheses. This is an array, Control shift enter and copy it over and copy it down. And sure enough, we have Sue and Christina, Tina and Joe. Those two are sharing uh, third place, in essence, at 174. And sure enough, if we go over here, we have Tina and Joe. So that's a lot about large, small, some uh, great basic examples, how to sum the largest ones for any 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 5, whatever you want to put in there, and then some beautiful array formulas for a unique list of numbers and returning um, the duplicate values uh, across columns. All right, we'll see you next trick.